Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK, out foraging again on a lovely 1st of December with Jordan, who's uh, holding the camera at the moment, but I'm gonna get him in front of the camera for some little bits of this video, because I'm, I'm a bit nasal at the moment. I'm just getting over a cold and you might prefer to listen to him, but um, it's December and the weather has changed. We've had some frosts and we've had some cold nights and it's only about six or seven degrees at the moment. It's been foggy for the last few days as well, which I do quite enjoy. Um, so the mushrooms that we're finding are the late autumn winter mushrooms. And we're just gonna show you a few of those that we've come out to find today, because these are the mushrooms that you wanna be looking for over the next month or possibly two, depending on what the weather does. Now, down here, we've got one I've done a, a video on before. We've got a bunch that we've picked there. Got to really watch where you tread when you're looking for this mushroom. They're everywhere around here and they are very well disguised. These are our winter chanterelles, which uh, I like to call the yellow legs. This one's actually split, as you can see there, into two separate legs. Uh, I think it's Craterellus tubiformis at the moment. Um, and this is a very sought after mushroom. It's in the chanterelle family. And as I've shown you before with the chanterelles, look for those fall skills. Really good example of it there. And when you find your first one of these, you stand stock still because you could well, as we have done already today, be treading on a few of the others. Now, we'll follow the line of these hiding right by Jordan's foot. There's a beauty. Now we're gonna go to a different mushroom. Wow, look, they're everywhere. Another. They don't always split, you can see this one has remained quite tubular. That down, oh goodness. You go that way, Jordan. I'll just uh, grab these. Oh my goodness. You really have to watch your step. Now, following that line, with these beautiful winter chanterelles down to here, yeah, is a different mushroom. Now, colour-wise, and you know, general makeup-wise, from the from the top, it's quite similar, but it's a bit bigger. When I first spotted it, I thought, "Oh my goodness, that's going to be the biggest winter chanterelle I've ever seen." But as I got closer, I saw these concentric circles that you might just be able to make out there on the cap. Told me it's a different mushroom, so I'll pick it now and show you. This is one I've never done a video on before. And as you can see, it's already lactating a little bit with white milk. Plenty of it there. A grubby brown stem and a cap that looks like a bit of wood. Now, this is the rather unfortunately named Ugly Milk Cap. I don't really know why uh, it's called the Ugly Milk Cap. I think it looks like a, a lovely bit of forest wood. And uh, it is, uh, to some people, an edible mushroom. If you uh, go to Europe, you'll find that people do boil this mushroom and throw the water away and then use the mushroom. Um, but it's not one I would recommend. If you taste the milk of this mushroom, uh, I'm not gonna do that because it's a bit moldy. But if you taste the milk of this mushroom, it doesn't do much for a few seconds, but then after that, you get an awful flavor. So while there's winter chanterelles around, I'll be leaving my ugly milk caps behind. Anyway, Lactarius turpis, I think, this week. And yeah, I don't think that's ugly. <laughs> Down here though, I've also put uh, another mushroom that you're going to be seeing around uh, the forest, whatever forest you go to. At this time of year, it's got that black stem, often sort of like uh, sort of antlers split off from it, and white top. 
this is our candle snuff fungus and it's uh one that you'll see everywhere now that I've shown it to you. It's uh, an extremely common mushroom and it's one of our uh, main saprophytes, you know, one of our main forest recyclers. So it's lovely to see. Um, and uh, apparently, I've never put this to the test, but apparently it does ever so slightly glow in the dark. It's got a little bit of phosphorescence to it. So a lovely mushroom to see. Not one that's gonna be going in my bag along with the Lactarius turpis, we'll leave those there. But, winter chanterelles. That's a, a good start to a, a December day's foraging. Let's go and find some more, Jordan. <laughs> Don't use that. <laughs> I'm a very lucky forager today. And uh, that's because Marlowe's shown me one of his secret spots for a really gourmet mushroom. And that is this mushroom down here. It's incredibly difficult to see within all the leaf litter, but we've managed to get some put together for you. This is Trompe de Mort, or the Trumpet of Death, or uh, its scientific name, which is Craterellis cornicopoides. Try saying that three times. And, uh, Milo's already done a video on this. It's just a quick one, really, just to kind of show that there may not really be any potential lookalikes for this mushroom, but there is one that is kind of doing a really good job at it. And that is this mushroom here. Now, this is a blackening rushula, or the leftovers of a blackening rushula. And as you can see, it looks relatively similar. It's growing within the same environment, not too far away. Um, but there's two big differences here, really. The uh, trumpet, Trump de Mort, it has no gills at all, and you can see that there. Whereas if you look very carefully, you can still see the remnants of these gills on the blackening rushula. And uh, another thing to note really is on the Trump de Mort, they're practically, they are hollow all the way through, and you can kind of, you can nip the end and you can see through the end of it. Whereas with your blackening rushula, there's no hollowness to it at all. So it's just one to kind of be careful of, really. Um, this isn't a mushroom I'd, I'd like to eat. Uh, definitely not when there's Trump de Mort around. Um, but yeah, just uh, basically just watch out, essentially. But if you do find your Trump de Mort, you're a very lucky person. Why am I doing this one, stuck in amongst the holly, I wonder, Jordan? Now, obviously, this is a December foray, it's a winter foray, and no winter or December foray is complete without your wood bluets. And here's some for us for today. Hiding underneath a holly bush, as I quite often find them. Now look at how beautiful and purple this one here is. So let's start by having a look at this. Whoa, big beauty. Oh no, there's a tiny little baby one. Sorry about that. Um, here you go, look at this. Perfect wood blew it. That amazing colouring. You can see here, it's mycelium in amongst the leaf litter it grows from it's a saprophyte that you find in almost any type of woodland or anywhere there's a good bit of rotting leaf litter and uh, you can get cultivated versions of these and the cultivated versions all have a very fat stem fatter than this even and you quite often buy them with a fat stem and a small cap but in the wild this is how they grow this is a, a more common would blew it. In fact, that's a rather enlarged umbo. The umbo there isn't quite as big as that normally. They don't have a long shelf life, but uh, that's not a problem because when I get these home, I tend to cook them up straight away. Our lovely lilac coloured wood bluets. And there's more just over this fence. The reason they hide underneath 
uh, things like holly and brambles is because they like places where the leaf litter is undisturbed. I used to think that they uh, were in some way mycorrhizal with holly because I found them with it so much, but it really is just a bit of ground where things are left to rot and people don't tread too much. So I'm gonna pick these, tread lightly and get out of here. Look at that one. Beautiful mushrooms. And nice and tasty. Very safe as well. One of the safer mushrooms that you can go foraging for as a beginner because although there are some lookalikes at this size, you've got a few Cortinarius that are similar, none of them are poisonous. So there you go. Just so lovely to look at. Lepista nuda, probably this week. Um, yeah, nice little addition to the bag. So Jordan's brought along his little woodland stove. I like to go light, but he's uh, brought along some cooking stuff. So we're gonna have a bit of woodland lunch, which I'm quite pleased about. Now we're just gonna have some uh, mushrooms and bread. But they are fine mushrooms. We are gonna cover them in a little bit of butter and cream. Now, uh, the different mushrooms here do need to be cooked differently. First of all, the bluets must be well cooked. So I'm going to put them in first and slice them quite thin. And you do find that when you're using bluets fresh, that they will uh, exude a lot of water into your pan. So I'm going to fry them quite hot, hopefully counteract that. Otherwise, what you have to do is keep tipping the uh, juice out of the pan if it gets too juicy. Kind of fricassee these and the horn of plenty, tromp the more. As hot as this little burner will go. Yeah, look at that, children. Ah, some lovely wooden lunch. Would you like some too, Jordan? Yes, please. <laughs> So it's uh, another cold December's day, December the 3rd today, and we've come to somewhere, um, a grassy area, where I was expecting to find wax caps, but the joy of foraging is the surprises that you get. And I've got a couple of, well, not mushrooms that I readily associate with December here. We've got our amethyst deceivers doing their twisty thing, and our deceiver there, Lucaria lacata widely spaced gills. As I always say, the deceiver isn't a mushroom really for beginner foragers. There are a lot of lookalikes for the deceiver. The amethyst deceiver with these beautiful purple gills, nice and safe. But if you wait there, under here, was more of a surprise. There's quite a few examples. I'll just put those down there. Here's a mushroom I haven't done a video on before and not one I was expecting to find on the 3rd of December. You can see this is an Amanita, very young one that hasn't opened up. I'll just break him open and expose the white gills. Slightly off white gills. And I'll give the side a scrape, show you what happens. 
gets all a little bit embarrassed. And actually you can see the reddening a bit more clearly where it was damaged before. Where was that? There. Reddening in that hole. It's blushing. And with this, with these characteristics and that blushing, what I've got here is the Amanita erubescens, the, uh, the blusher, which is an edible mushroom and a really nice one. It has to be very well cooked. And if you don't know what you're doing, this is not a mushroom to go foraging for. It's in the Amanita genus. It's in the same genus as the death cap and other highly toxic mushrooms. So uh, this one here, I'm happy with my idea of and I'm going to take it home and cook it. But for you guys that are just uh, beginning on your mushroom foraging journeys, uh, this is one to leave behind until you're very sure of what you're doing. Stick to the amethyst deceivers and, uh, and the winter chanterelles. They're nice and easy to ID and leave the blushers uh, for me, actually. That'd be nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely frosty start to the day today at Byford. But the oyster mushrooms don't care. Right, so it's the uh, 6th of December now and we're out again looking for mushrooms. I'm trying to find mushrooms for this video that I haven't put in lots of other videos, so some new things. And uh, I've got to say, if you're out from now in December through January and early February, I've done a mushroom video all about winter mushrooms and that's quite a long comprehensive video, so have a look at that. But this mushroom down here wasn't in it. This lovely mushroom right beside it amongst our grass and our ground ivy and a ooh, little bit of lady smock there, that's lovely. This is another member of our bluet family. This is the field bluet, Lepista siva, now, or saver. Uh, it's a, a, a bluet that has very different makeup, really, to, to your wood bluets. It doesn't have that purple look uh, to the cap or to the gills at all, but it does have a lovely bit of purple, just to give it a key identifier. And it's not on the gills, the cap, as I said, it's on the stem. You get this violet tinge, hoping the camera can pick it up on there, on the stem of your field bluet. And if you've got that violet tinge to the stem on a mushroom growing in rings in grassland, are we, uh, how are we looking here? in uh, winter then you've got uh, a field bluet there's some younger ones just along here there there are mushrooms that you can quite easily tread on they're difficult to spot and here's a little baby <laughs> that did suffer the force of my boot just before we started filming oh i did smash it quite badly but on the younger ones want to uproot it and show you that violet tinge on the stem is lovely and vibrant a true key identifier for this mushroom so rings in grassland in winter this is a nice mushroom to find. Um, it doesn't have quite the same flavour as the uh, wood bluet. And of the two, I've got to say, I think I prefer this one with the slightly less perfumey side to the flavour. Um, it also gets to be quite big. If you find a place where they're undisturbed in a field, you can find big rings of this mushroom. And some of them can be, well, with stems, a good few inches in diameter and caps that can get to maybe 15 centimetres if you don't mind me jumping between my metric and old scales there. Um, so yeah, the, the field blew it. A fairly nondescript mushroom with a brown cap starts off as a small dome. This white tinge to the edges does happen on the mature versions, but none of that's important. What's important when you're IDing this one is that kind of flocculose 
nature or scurfy nature to the to the stem a bit like a lexinum but with that amazing violet tinge a lovely mushroom to find and we're going to collect a few more none of them poster boys they're all a little bit beaten up around here but that does not change the flavor let's pick some more All right, so we've come a little bit further along and uh, we found a lovely plant. I just wanted to show you this because it's definitely going in our food today. It's down here. It's uh, one of the alliums. This is our three-cornered leek or allium triquetrum. You can see the triangular nature to the stem there. There's a triangular flowering stem and, uh, and a more delicate small white garlicky flower when it comes into flower now uh, this is uh, an invasive species so i've no problem uh, harvesting this from wherever i find it it belongs in the mediterranean so it's a plant that uh, shouldn't really be here and it's very vigorous so it does take over patches quite often when it gets in but if you find a little patch like this it's not doing too much harm uh, it does look like a lot of other winter plants though in late winter you've got your snowdrops coming up and things like that that can look quite similar uh, it has that amazing garlicky smell though so if you're not sure or if you find a plant that looks like this just grab one of the leaves have a little crush and a smell and as long as your nose works then yes you've uh, got this or potentially a few flowered garlic that's another invasive which looks almost identical really um, both equally edible and this one is certainly going with our mushrooms uh, garlic and mushrooms today Jordan sounds good 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 let's move on well I pick some first actually <laughs> So it's the 7th of December today and we're gonna go out and see what's around. Last night though was the first serious frost of the year so it's gonna be uh, a bit more limiting on the mushrooms that we might be able to find. I'd be very surprised if we find anything like a blusher today uh, that isn't absolutely frost bitten. Um, down here though I've already been surprised because this tree stump, this little stump here has made an appearance in one of my videos before because it grows me these lovely velvet shanks. Now, I'm not gonna pick any of those for you today to show you the details. Watch my other video on the velvet shank. Uh, I'm gonna let these grow because I'm gonna harvest them in a, in a few days and eat them. But the surprise was just down beside them here. Look there. Now, uh, those are one of the ink caps. December ink caps. Now I can see some frosting just around the base here. It's been a bit wet, but I can see some of those mica crystals down there. So what I've got there is another edible. Oh, look, and some that have been smashed up. Who would have done that, Jordan? Um, these, uh, these are our glistening ink caps. Uh, another edible mushroom, not a really, really tasty one. They're, they're good when they're young and fresh in a mixed mushroom dish. Um, but yeah, there's my first surprise of the day. Let's see what else uh, we, can, we can find. And uh, yeah, surprises there are. December surprises. This is uh, one of them just down here. These are our poplar field caps in my poplar field cap spot. Inside a poplar tree, show you the leaves of your poplar tree, they look a bit like birch leaves but bigger, a bit like lime leaves but smaller and uh, around your poplar trees you quite often find this lovely lovely mushroom now. I'll just pick this one here and show you, oops, we've got clusters of these mushrooms growing with this stretched sort of skin type look across the cap. You get a ring on the uh, stem. This one's half come off, up to the off-white to uh, very pale brown gills. Slightly pinkish hue to them there. 
I have done a whole ID video on the uh, poplar field cap before, so have a look at that before you start picking these for yourselves because there are some lookalikes for this mushroom. But for me, this is a, a pleasant December surprise for a forager. I just wish I'd come here two days ago before the hard frost of last night because I'm pretty sure that hard frost that we had last night is the reason that these ones here are brown and uh, that the other clusters around although there are some edibles still in good condition like this one in amongst them um, that hard frost we had last night has meant that this is the last time I expect to be able to crop from here this year but who knows with our weather the way it is at the moment anyway pop the field caps let's see what else we can find <laughs> This is not a surprise. These are things that I expect to find in December, but they've gone a bit rotten. Look at that mold there. These are our meadow wax caps. And I'm surprised to see that mold there. That means that it's not going in my bag. Cuphophilus pretensis. Uh, they make it into all my winter videos because they're a lovely, lovely edible. Um, but these ones, uh, don't look fit for the bag, I'm afraid. Let's see what else is around. Here we go. This is, how are you? Oh no, again. This one's seen better days. They've all rotted a little bit. Maybe not quite ready for that frost last night. Plenty of ice on the cap there. This is a more mature meadow wax cap. I think, this one can go in the bag. I'm going to cut off that rotten section on the side just there. But yeah, frozen meadow wax caps. Definitely for the bag. I promise you guys, I do not spend all my spare time hanging out in graveyards. Uh, I tend generally to only come here to either look for mushrooms or pay respects. And today it's definitely mushrooms. Have a look down here. Here's some more of our wood bluets. Look at the ice on the top of that one there. And I think pan back and follow me along a little bit, but here's a few more, just one or two. And it keeps going <laughs> and keeps going and keeps going. And if you uh, want to have a look, that looks like the rest of the ring over there. Oh no, here, here. <laughs> There's a few. And some more here. If that is all one organism, which it could well be, we're talking about maybe, oh, I don't know, I'll do a quick one. What, 10 metres potentially uh, in diameter, this wood blew it circle. I'm liking this graveyard. <laughs> right, this is one of the uh, little suspenseful moments of foraging. We've just found some December agarics, would you believe? There's been a few of them around, some little youngsters here. Some more mature ones here, and one that's probably a bit over there. So, do I know what these are yet? Absolutely not. Let's see if we can find out. Sorry about the sniffing. Well, a little bit of yellowing there, Eric. Nothing too bright though. What do we think? Hmm. A little bit worse for wear after that frost, but, and the stem feels a bit hollow. But let's have a look, Ooh, nothing up there. And the final test, even with my slightly blocked nose, we have December horse mushrooms and quite a few of them. I am really liking this graveyard. 
more December surprises uh, since we were driving around and we found the uh, the Piapinos, the the poplar field caps. I thought we'd try a few of my other spots for autumn mushrooms. Down here is another surprise, a December flush of fairy ring champignons. 2022 is a very strange year. And I think that um, these moose are on, these fairy ring champignons, uh, because it's been so cold, I, I expect them all to be maggot free. So another nice December surprise, keep them coming. <laughs> Yeah, look at these, these <laughs> icy December mousseron, December fairy ring champignons are just about the best and chunkiest and nicest condition mousseron uh, that I've, I've found this year. Um, I expect that maybe when they defrost their consistency might go a little bit mushy though, so I'll get these in the pan tonight for sure. So that's been a fun few forays with uh, a fair few surprises. Try saying that fast. Um, it's, uh, it's been a strange start to December, but the frosts have definitely bitten now. So I think it's going to be less of the Piapinos and blushers and more of the bluets and the winter chanterelles from, uh, from now till the end of December, hopefully. Um, so I do hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do, give us a like. And uh, also remember us, if you're watching this video, it's a December mushroom video that means it's close to Christmas time and if you're uh, stuck for what to get that special someone have a look on our website and check out the gift vouchers and all the other foraging goodies that we've got on wildfooduk.com I'm gonna leave you with a bit of mushroom artwork